In this lesson, we'll talk about working with multiple paint layers and different channels. So here we have our T-Rex with our single uh, paint layer under the diffuse channel. We've got color added for kind of the base of the body. We've got a little bit of color added for the claws. I've gone ahead and painted those, just giving it a base color. And we've broken up the color a little bit on, uh, on this guy, but there's a lot more to do. Now, one of the great things about using Mudbox is the ability to work with multiple paint layers across multiple channels. So right now we've got a single channel, the diffuse channel, and we've got a single paint layer within that channel. So let's start to add some paint layers uh, to our diffuse and see how that works. So to add a new layer, just go ahead and click on this, create new paint layer, and we could just call this something like uh, Rex Back Detail. Okay, we can make it a different size if we want, or we can make it the same size. So we can change the uh, the type of image that it is, and we can choose what kind of uh, channel it's piped into. Uh, the channels that we have to choose from are Diffuse, Specular, Gloss, Incandescence, Bump Map, Normal Map, Reflection Mask. Diffuse is going to be the color. The specularity is going to be, see where the uh, highlights are. And then the gloss is going to be kind of the tightness of those highlights, so how shiny it is, how glossy it is. Okay. Incandescence is going to be kind of if, if it's kind of a glowing uh, part of the object, you can uh, paint that in so it's kind of il self illuminated. And then obviously we have bump map, which is uh, kind of the raised or lowered areas. And then a normal map where we can have uh, view our normal maps here within this channel. And then also reflection mask. So if parts of the, uh, the model are more reflective than other parts, we can paint that in there as well. So let's go ahead and add another paint layer to our diffuse. We'll go ahead and drop that in, and it's going to add that inside this diffuse channel above our body color. We have the same options here for visibility and opacity. Let's go ahead and use our paintbrush, and let's just get a stamp. We'll randomize it, and let's get kind of an interesting color, maybe a green. And let's go ahead and paint into this layer. So we'll just come in here and... Okay, just start to paint through here. We could change up our brush size if we want. Just kind of add a little bit of uh, green detail here along the back. And again, you can use whatever color that you want. I'm just going to use something that stands out quite a bit. All right, I'm going to go ahead and change up our, uh, our brush strokes here if we want to. So get a little bit larger brush stroke. And just come in and paint some detail along the, the back here. All right, so once we've got that, let's take a look at some of the options we have for working with this particular uh, layer that we've just created, okay? So if we don't like the green, if it's a little bit too much, we can always go in and dial down the opacity of the green, okay? So we can modify the layer that way. We can also use the blend modes up here. So right now it's set to normal. We can also set it to multiply, so it'll kind of darken up that layer beneath it and then we can still modify the opacity if we want. So if we don't want that green, we can choose a different type of uh, blend mode. And we have a number of different types here. And again, we can change the opacity of those as well. So you can really start to stack uh, multiple paint layers on top of each other using those blend modes, really get something custom, and you have a lot of flexibility in working with those. Okay. So once you've got the paint layer, you also have the ability, uh, once you're done with those paint layers, to kind of save that back down into the bottom layer so that you have a single texture map rather than a bunch of different maps that you're working with. Um, to do that, you can go ahead and say Merge Visible, and that will merge those paint layers together with the visibility and blend mode settings that you have. So that can be useful. Uh, you just want to make sure that you're, you're done sort of tweaking that layer when you go ahead and merge that down. So it'll kind of save that down into the, uh, the, into the base layer, and then you'll be left with a single uh, paint layer from which to work. All right, let's go ahead and add a new layer here. We'll call this one Rex Spots Large. And let's say that we want to add some large uh, sort of dark spots, large, some sort of detail on the back. It doesn't have to be spots, but maybe some sort of a shape. So we'll go ahead and add that to the diffuse. So again, we're left with the same uh, new paint layer. So with our paintbrush, we'll turn the stamp off, and I'm going to just get black the color and I'm just going to go in and start to draw in some uh, some shapes here so again feel free to kind of do your own thing but I'm just going to create some kind of large scale uh, shapes in here maybe something like that 
just kind of along the back here. All right. And once we've got these shapes in, we can modify the opacity of those, or we can use blend modes on those. We can kind of dial those back a little bit. All right. Now we can also uh, add another uh, channel to the uh, to the workflow here. So if we want to add another channel in addition to our paint layers, right now we're just working with diffuse. Let's say we want to add kind of a bump. We can go ahead and add a new paint layer, and we'll call this X bump. We can change the size if we want. Uh, we definitely want to change the channel to bump map. Say OK, and it's going to create, you can see this new section here for bump map. It's our new channel. And now we've got this image loaded in here, which we can uh, paint on. So if we were to come in with our paintbrush and maybe use a white, and let's get one of these stamps, we can start to add a little bit of bump detail in there. Okay. Now what we can also do is reuse maps that we've already created. So we've got these spots up here. So as part of our uh, diffuse channel, we've got the, the sort of dark spots that we just created. Okay. So let me just go ahead and dial those up so you can see those black spots. What we can do is go ahead and right click on that paint layer, duplicate selected. So go ahead and duplicate that layer and it's going to drop it uh, back into the diffuse. So we'll have two copies of that basically within the diffuse channel uh, of those uh, spots that we created. Now we can take that copy and just click and drag it down to additional channels here. So in this case, the bump. You can see the blue line indicates where it's going to be dropped. So go ahead and drop that copy that we uh, made into the bump. And if we want to, we can go ahead and right click on that original one and just delete that. So now our spots are actually uh, are actually causing the bump to occur. So they're they're the new map for the bump. And it's the same map that we have for the spots. Now a problem comes because the the uh, black of the spots is actually wanting to push the bump down and we want to actually raise it up. So what we can do is we'll get a taste of one of the new image adjustment brushes, the invert. Okay. And we want to make sure that we cover the entire map or all these spots in one stroke. Uh, because as if we go over a little bit and then we go over it again, it's going to just keep inverting it back and forth. So we want to make sure and cover it without lifting up the uh, the pen. So what we're going to do is just stroke across the map here. And you can see how that raises up the bump rather than lowering it back down. And so the bump is now in registration with the, the fuse that we matched it with or that because we used the same map to create that. All right. So we can go back up to the uh, to the spots layer in our diffuse and we can dial that opacity back down. And the bump you can see comes through there. All right. Now let's say that we want to we can see right here how this specular highlight is pretty even across the surface. We can modulate that with a map. So let's go ahead and add a new paint layer. And for this one, I'm going to actually make this 1K a little bit smaller. So you can make your maps fit the amount of detail that you need to actually create. So for the color map, you want something a little bit more high res. Maybe for the specular, you don't need something as high res. And we'll just call this spec. And we'll pipe this into the specular channel. That'll create a new channel for us here. Come in on the spec. And so what we want to do to kind of just break this up is we'll go back and get the paintbrush and we can get kind of one of our stamps that we have. And to take that specular down, I'm just going to take it down almost to black. And you want to get pretty close. Okay. And let me just increase the stamp spacing a little bit. And now you can see as we come through, we can start to break up the specular and just give it a little bit more of a natural look there. So it's not so even across the entire surface. And maybe just do this in a, a couple of sections here. Okay, so we can come in here and 
I just kind of break that up. Okay. You kind of break this up along the uh, along the face. So anywhere you see, you can come in here and just kind of break up that specular so it's not doesn't have that shine across the whole surface. It's kind of broken up a little bit. And that'll definitely help out your final images in your models here and your textures. Okay, maybe we want the parts of this to be a little bit more specular. We can just take this up a little bit more. Maybe make that a little bit more specular around there. Okay, maybe around the eye. And then, you know, go back in and we'll, maybe you want to break up the, the nose a little bit. Come back in with a darker, more of a black. And just kind of break that up. Again, using our stamps will help us do that really, really quickly. All right. And we can also define sort of shinier areas by using gloss. And all these correspond to the properties of our material we saw earlier. So if we wanted to change the gloss, which is we wanted to maybe tighten up some of the areas of spec, we would just go in and create a new map. Let's do 1K. Let's call this Rex Gloss. Pipe that into the gloss. Okay, and again, we're going to get a new channel over here on the right with a new paint layer inside. Okay, and so for the gloss, turn the stamp off. To create something that's a little bit glossier, we would go ahead and just dial this up a little bit to a lighter gray. Okay, so darker color is going to be less gloss. So we'll just dial this up, and then let's look in some of these areas and see how this looks. So you can see here, as we come along the mouth, you can see it makes it look a little bit more wet as it tightens up that speck. All right, and we can also come in here tighten up that speck along the eye so you can see it makes that look a little bit more wet okay on some of these areas maybe up here we want that to look a little bit more wet maybe up at, at the top of the head maybe here around the nose we want that to look a little bit more wet you know, on the top here so again you can break that up just like we did with the specular you come back in and maybe some of these areas are a little bit of a, a wider spec there. So you can really customize using the specular and the gloss and get uh, a lot of different effects on your model. So you can see the eye area looks a little bit more wet along with the mouth and maybe some of the other parts of the model. And then we can go through and kind of break up that spec on the rest of the model as well. Okay, so using multiple channels and multiple paint layers here in Mudbox is going to be a really powerful way for you to get a really customized look on your model and also a really flexible workflow because you have all of these uh, different maps, different paint layers, different channels that you're able to modify, blend those together using the blend modes and opacity and really get something that uh, really fits what you're looking for and also have the ability to go back and change that if you need to. All right, so uh, we take a look at using multiple paint layers here in Mudbox. In the next lesson, let's take a look at using the dry brush in Mudbox. So we'll take a look at that next.